Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Rune News. I'm your host, Ryan Ryan, and as always, fuck you, fuck you. It's bloody good to have you guys here today. Now, this week, Jagex has given us some changes to Valamore, specifically around the Colosseum, that will actually improve your experience and help you acquire your quiver. And then there are some changes in the wilderness which will actually make the average player a lot of money provided you are successful. I know a lot of you might not enjoy wilderness content, and that is more for PvPers and PKs, but for the PvMers that want to actually try and make a bit of money and don't mind taking a little bit of a risk outside of the Rev Caves, there's a good amount of money that can be made in the wilderness with this week's update and I'm going to go through it now with you guys to help you become a richer and better player. So with that all said and done guys, before we get into the update today, I would like to know in the comment section down below if you have much experience in the wilderness. Is this the sort of content you're going to try tackling today? Do you normally go to the Rev Caves or the Wildy Bosses anyway? If not, would you consider trying it if you could make a decent amount of money at the new Agility Arena or the new Pirates? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there. My name is Ryan Rain. You're watching Rune News and you're watching Rune News. This week's update is labelled Undead Pirates, Colosseum Changes and more. We'll start off with the Undead Pirates. You might remember the Winter Summit this was discussed. Not the most exciting part of the Summit, but I mean, there's a lot of money to be made here. So even the casual player who does a little bit of Wilderness PVMing, you can make a decent buck here as long as you're careful and take your time. This is at the Chaos Temple where the Chaos Druids are currently at level 14 to 9 Wilderness. Looks like they've added an extra exit slash entrance here at the back so you can escape and enter at a lower level if you need to. Basically, these Pirates are going to drop a high amount of money, the very valuable loot, and they're going to be low defense, low HP, so you'll be able to clean them up quickly and easily. You'll get a key, as a well, there's a chance to get a key, sorry, which you can go over to the east where there is a boat. This boat has a chest. You use the key on the chest, the chest opens up. Inside the chest, there's loot. Loot, that means money for you. What is the loot? The loot is the same as the drop table of the zombies, except it's doubled. That's right, times two. That's the chest with the key. The keys are tradable. You can buy them, you can sell them, you can use them, you can do whatever you want, jam it down your foreskin. I don't care. So you've got the chest, you get the loot. Anything is doubled, including the uniques, which is adamant seeds, the same as... Excuse me. Shut the fuck up! So adamant seeds are the same as mithril seeds, except when you plant the mithril seeds, you move east. With the adamant seeds, you move west. I may have got the directions wrong. Doesn't matter. It's mostly for PKing, so if you get them, just sell them because you're garbage. You can't PK anyway. You don't need them. The other unique is a scroll. It's a one-time use scroll. And what this does is it stops the chaos druids here. I've lost my mouse now. The chaos druids up here at the... Uh, at the temple, it stops them from teleblocking you, so if you see a PK, you can get out, which I recommend getting the scroll immediately, it's going to be pretty helpful. It also stops the Abyssal Demons from teleporting you anywhere in the game, and zipping you over to them, which will be massive for Slayer, especially in the Catacombs, because when you're trying to stack all the demons and they pull you all over the place, not anymore. That makes Ice Barrage best in slot once again at the Abyssal Demons, uh, which I mean, I use it there anyway because I don't have brain damage. Anyway, moving forward, some hard clue has been moved. Um, that's mostly it, to be honest, with the, the Undead Pirates. It looks like it's going to be really good to farm, and a lot of money can be made there. You just need to be careful, and you want to get your hands on that Teleport Scroll as soon as possible, and the keys being tradable obviously means that you can kind of just run to the chest constantly and farm the keys if you need to, and get decent loot. You're probably going to make a, a good amount of money here, provided you are safe about it, but just be careful, because it is multi. Don't take anything you can't risk. It should be fun. I'm, I'm not going to do it myself anytime soon, I don't think, but uh, if it depends on what's on the drop table and if it's worth farming them. If it is, then I'll go check it out, of course, but PKs are going to have a hard on here. It's a wilderness update. It's going to bring people like victims to the wilderness, which is a win for everyone because that means did a bit of stops crying like a bitch for another fucking week. So it's a win-win for everybody. Moving on to the next part of the update, which is more relatable. Valamor changes. Colosseum modifiers. We went over this in a video of mine previously. Uh, so you should really know what's happening, but I'll give you a quick TLDR. Basically, bees are slower, Doom is no longer garbage, Blasphemy is, I don't even know what that means, Doom Scorpion's been removed. There's a new um, modifier, which makes, basically makes the uh, Manticore a lot stronger. So all of their attacks uh, will, it, well, at level 1, sorry, all of their attacks will be like 2 hits. So it'll be like 2 mage, 2 range, 2 melee. Although they will be on like a 1 tick attack cycle still, so it's 1 game tick is 2 mage, 1 game tick is 2 range. 
one game tick is two melee. I believe that's what I'm getting from this anyway. Uh, the second level, they can inflict venom if you take damage. And the third level uh, makes them all completely random. The melee orb is no longer the final attack. So that's really exciting. Uh, looks like it'll actually increase the, I guess, challenge inside the Colosseum with the mandicles if you want to. And are still completely manageable provided you are decent at prey flicking and able to manage your time in there. Myopia. Um, basically, auto casting is now affected by losing your attack range, but manual casting is not. Relentless uh, is less garbage, and Totemic is still a terrible fucking choice anyway, so who cares? New loot rates. Basically, you can get uniques at level 3 now, so wave 3 instead of wave 6, but the, the throwing ninja star is locked until wave 7. Just remember that, but here are the numbers, and as you can see, it's actually a much better outcome for when you can get a unique roll. Uh, regardless all the way up to the boss wave at being 1 in 12 which is awesome I think this works out that technically it's harder to get the echo crystals and the sunfire armor at a, at a base rate but on average it's about the same because they have pulled back the like when you can start getting the unique so I mean I'm not too bothered by that at all I still haven't seen a fucking unique unfortunately but I did stop going to the Colosseum um, at the moment so yeah, if, you, if this helps you guys make more money, then fucking awesome. Let's go for it. There's a bunch of changes here, which are all horse shit that no one cares about. More wilderness changes. There's more money to be made. That's right. You thought the Undead Pirates was it? Nah. Nah, son. We got more. Agility course. So, here's, here's the TLDR. Basically, with the agility course, it's a 150,000 GP fee to enter. Well, if you want to enter. I don't think you have to pay this, but if you do, that's when you can start getting loot. If you die, you lose the 150k, but it doesn't go to the PK, which I guess is nice, but you still lose the money. PK doesn't get it, so that's handy. What happens is, if you have this uh, this fee in the coffer, every time you do a lap, there's going to be a, a totem at the end. You tag the totem, you're going to get a ticket, and you're going to get some loot, with the average loot going up depending on how many laps you've done. Sorry, so between 1 and 15 laps, 10k loot. I believe this is why you got money in the coffer. So if you leave and come back, the laps are saved, I believe. If you log out and log back in, the laps are saved. I think if you die, the laps are reset. I believe that's how it works, but I could be wrong. Uh, you'll get about 50-50 split of alcohols and blighted items, um, which is handy. And if you have open inventory slots, you'll get unnoted blighted items to help you keep your health up. They've added more skeletons there. So that way, uh, I guess you're just taking more damage while you're running around. It's not really a problem. But here's the selling point. You've got to be careful. It is singles plus, which means PvP takes priority over PvM. You can't be boxed by a skeleton. So if a skeleton hits you, a player can still jump on you and fuck you. So just be cautious. There's a lot of money to be made. It's a 1 in 40 chance for a medium clue scroll. If you want to do this, the XP rate has actually been buffed too. So this is actually probably not a bad like place to train agility, provided you are careful, you're cautious. And if you want to anti-PK, it's probably not a bad idea either. Because as you can see, the amount of laps that you've done increases the XP rate for these tokens that you can hand in as well. Just like the Brimhaven Arena, except it's going to be a way better XP rate. But obviously there's a lot more risk. So I would probably not touch this content for about a month. And once it's died down, you'll probably still have some issues here and there. But if you, if you play the cards right, you can probably get away with... Uh, Probably get away with getting some decent XP rates out of the Wilderness Agility course. The only thing to remember is that these tickets, if you die to a player with them, they will be dropped as coins for the PK. So make sure you use them as much as you can, I guess. It's up to you if you want to save up past 10, 50 tickets or not. You're, you're just, you know, I don't know if it's worth the XP rate. I reckon go to 11 tickets and send it. It's probably going to be the safest choice with a, a, a good outcome of the tickets, but who knows. Other PvP changes in the Wilderness... Uh, to be honest, there's not a whole lot being changed here, like NPC timers are being reduced, uh, some of the spawns are being made a lot more decent, uh, some of the drop rates are changing on just insignificant NPCs when it comes to Slayer. Nothing really too hectic here, nothing worth really noting. Superiors uh, have a 10% increased chance of spawning in the wilderness. You can now purchase an imbued god cape for 250k after completing the mini quest, so you don't have to go and do the, like, hunting for the boss again, I guess. Um... Manually uncharging your imbued items will refund 100% of the points and zeal, up from 80%, which is cool. And if you die and you were to lose an imbued item, so say you got a Berserker Ring that's imbued and you die and you would lose it, you'll actually get those points back or the imbued scroll back. So, I, I mean, that's that's nice, that's convenient. I guess it helps everyone around, especially PKs who forget to imbue them. Skill specs, that's big for you. Um, otherwise, they fix the unintended PJ timer interactions across single-way, multi-way combat. I'm not going to try and sit here and explain the PJ timer because, one, I don't have fucking time. Two, I don't fully understand it with this ABC shit. It's easier if I draw it. So if you're interested, 
go ahead and read it. Uh, you can have a pause right now or uh, dickhead, go to the website and read it yourself. Otherwise, that's really an, uh, like a wrap for the update. No one cares about these fucking plushies. Uh, the LMS worlds are back on non-Oz worlds. Other changes here is all garbage as well. War beasts no longer prevent players entering the Lumbridge Swamp Caves. Makes no sense. Um, and that's it for the RuneScape update. But money can still be made. If you're not going to do the wilderness, I guarantee we can make you some money by flipping items on the ground exchange. And we're going to have all the information here right now with Wade Green after a brief 10 second update on RuneScape 3. My name is Ryan Ryan. Sit, sit, sit. <laughs> sit tight, stay tuned, Rune News. RuneScape 3 did not receive any updates in the wilderness this week. I don't even know if RuneScape 3 has a wilderness. I remember they disabled it once, right? They killed it, made PvP dead. I don't know if they brought it back. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you anything about RuneScape 3 because RuneScape 3 is fucking dog shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Grand Exchange segment for Rune News. My name is Wade Green, and today we got the Christmas crackers still on the fucking rise, which means those death matches, the gamblers, the BTCs, the pin dicks of the community, they're getting fucked because the more expensive these are, the more money they got to spend on people trying to mass buy them from the Grand Exchange, which is fucking huge. So make sure when you're buying Christmas crackers, buy them for about 1.9 mil, flip them. I reckon 2.5 mil is a pretty safe bet now at the moment because they're going to buy these regardless because they make billions, millions and millions of profit off of these Christmas crackers. 1.9 mil is a drop in the water for them, but it can mean a big difference for you and your bank. So just flip them for a big profit. 2.5 mil is a pretty good projection at this rate. You should be able to comfortably farm these boys up. When Christmas time comes around, you want to have all the crackers you can get. Put them in your bank. When Christmas time's over and there's no more crackers, no more bots farming them, that's when you make some more money. So hold on to these bad boys, sell them for a good profit. That's pretty much how you're going to make bank. That's a Wade Green guarantee. Next up, we got these ninja stars for the Colosseum. They're called the ton Tonals Ticks of R R Ralos. Basically, these are, uh, they're falling in price as all items do when they come to the game, but they just got buffed this week. They no longer have a cap on how much defense they can drain. So we might see a slight rise in these bad boys, especially for things like Olm's head, and I think even people are using them on like Tecton or some shit, so, uh, which is kind of irrelevant now that the Dragon War Hammer is a guaranteed hit on Tecton, but these might see a slight buff. They're going to become part of the meta very soon as well with future updates, especially Vulnerable Part 2 and Wild Guffic Sleep. So I'll uh, hold on to these if you get one for now. Definitely a good item to get. Definitely a good drop. Now, the Twisted Bow is all over the place and people are torn because they were like, it's going to hit max cash stack, but those people are dickheads. Look at the price. It's plummeting. It's holding. It's plummeting. It's rising. And now it's holding again. And uh, basically... This is probably what's going to happen for the foreseeable future until there is some Tebow meta, because currently there is not. The Scythe was the utility item inside the Colosseum. The Tebow got dumpstered. I recommend either holding onto your Tebows or dropping them before they get to 1.4 bill, because that's where they're going to hit, because the death matches and their item flippers, they're just sitting there with their billions, flipping coins, flipping money, trying to make money off of you guys with big ticket items. And the Tebow is not worth the 1.6 bill. It's going to drop to about 1.4 bill by the end of the year or unsubscribe. And finally, the mole slippers are back on the rise at 1.2 mil. We told you this was going to happen. This is a small rise in the price. This is going to continue to rise. There's always a small dip every time it goes up. Mole slippers are guaranteed to hit about 1.5 mil next week. Estimated at least with 30 mil being the target this time next year. 12 months from now, 30 mil for your mole slippers or your money back and unsubscribe. That's a Wade Green guarantee. So buy your mole slippers today. Be at the top of the hill here. Become a rich cunt tomorrow because everyone else that buys them after you is going to earn less and less money. So buy them today. Tell your friends. They tell their friends. Yours become more and more and more. And then your mole slippers become more slippers. I want to die. Fuck me. Our first Iron Man moment for the week goes to good day to you all. Once again, doing TOA now without the Runelite client. All on the base client, pulled a Missouri chest. I believe this is his first purple in TOA. Got carried, or at least did the raid with Cute and Funny. I don't know if he got carried, but he got helped, it says here at least. Um, and then he got the Elidinus Ward Menify Ultimate Kit on the next KC as well. Pretty big. Man's doing it on the vanilla standard client that runs like shit. Man's a gamer. GZ. Next up, we have P. Suckness. Getting an occult necklace. Nice work. And then finally, Polak gets his first purple, which is a Sang Staff at 106 top KC. His first top purple, uh, which scares me because I'm at 90 KC and I haven't got a purple in my name yet. Really fucking annoying and I hope I don't go this dry. But if I did get a purple, Sang Staff being the first purple is probably the best item I could get. I'll be very happy with that. And, well, 
Speaking of being happy, the video's over, so we can all enjoy that. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I'll be in the live stream tomorrow. My name is Ryan Ryan. You're watching Rune News, and uh, you're watching Rune News. This is the easiest room in the race. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him, goddamn! Fuck me, look at that boy. It's huge! You got a big boy.